Not only is the Ole's NPC questline very interesting in Shadow of the Earth Tree, it also takes you to a very unique location in this DLC. I'll be going through every single step of the Ole's questline and all the rewards you get by completing it. There's a lot to cover, so let's get into it. You're going to find the Olier at one location in the beginning of the game before you head to the Shadow Keep. This location is the Pillar Path site of Grace, and it's the only person you're going to actually see at this location. Now, in the beginning of this DLC, before you go and visit the Shadow Keep for the very first time, he's very timid, as you'll see throughout the entire quest line, but you can also buy some stuff for him, which I highly recommend you do before you progress the quest line. Now, to continue his quest line, you do have to go to the Shadow Keep and break Mikola's rune, which is going to move him onto the next section of his quest line. He's going to be shocked. That you're not affected by the broken spell and he's going to tell you that he's kind of lost what he needs to do next this is when you need to go to a different npc and the particular npc you need to talk to is more because the olier asked him to find something in particular for him and more has actually found it which means you just need to go and collect it from him it needs to be mentioned that you should be exhausting every bit of dialogue for all these npcs to make sure you have everything from them because if you come to more and he doesn't have the item that the olier is looking for it's probably because you didn't exhaust the olier's dialogue enough but eventually when you talk to more enough after the shattering of the rune he will actually give you the item that the Olea was talking about which I mentioned just a second ago which is actually going to be black syrup now you just need to go back to the Olea. once you have the black syrup you will actually see an option to talk to the Olea. instead of purchase and selling items to him you can actually give him the black syrup which will then continue his quest line and you want to exhaust his dialogue after you give him the black syrup so you can get a very special concoction that comes from the black syrup which you can use in different quest lines now this concoction itself isn't actually used in the Olea's quest line so it's not something I'm going to go into depth here here, but you can look up a ton of different guides around this and how to use it. I'll have a couple videos around it going up later on. But at this point of his quest line, there's nothing more you can do because when you go and rest again, he's actually going to move to a different location. Thankfully, he does give you a little bit of a hint of where he's going. He's going to look for St. Trina and that he's simply moving south to try and find her. Now to find the LEA in his next location, you want to make your way down to the Cerulean Coast Cross Site of Grace. This is going to be your closest site of Grace before you go to the next location up the coastline that has a very unique shape to it all the way until you get to the fisher area now you may have discovered this location before you went to the shadow keep there will be a wall there that says that an event has to occur but if you have already gone through this guide and you've already interacted with the shadow keep you won't have to worry about that this personally is one of the coolest areas in the game in my opinion mainly because how open this area is and all the unique things that you come across in this area all related to saint trina now i won't be descending through this entire area in this video so that you guys can enjoy this for the first time but i'll show you exactly where you need to get to because as you notice as you progress through this area there's a lot of different sites of grace to help your progress the stonefisher coffin site of grace is basically your first introduction to this whole area you'll come across another cross you'll very shortly come across the fisher waypoint side of grace and then finally the fisher depths when you get to this particular side of grace you'll see a bunch of sleeping animals which will give you your cue that you're actually about to interact with something very closely related to saint trina so i will let you know now that this is leading into a remembrance boss now, if you don't want the remembrance boss spoiled for you i highly recommend you take a look at the timestamps on this video so you can skip past the remembrance boss and see what you need to do after you defeat this remembrance boss i will tell you that if you do not want to watch the actual remembrance boss make sure you actually summon theolia during the remembrance Remembrance boss as it is part of the quest line. I'll cover that again in just a little bit. Once you land in this boss arena, you will see a glowing sign if you progress the Olier's quest line correctly to summon the Olier, and this is very important that you do so because summoning him is actually part of the quest line to help progress it. Now that he is summoned, you want to move your way into the middle of the arena, and you're very quickly going to be introduced to the putrescent knight, who is not too difficult of a boss. He's more annoying than anything. He does have a pretty strong AoE attack throughout the boss fight, so just keep that in mind when you are doing this fight now that you have defeated the knight you're going to see another cave where the knight just came out of this is where you want to go into because you're going to be introduced to theolia on the ground and also saint trina herself from here on out you're going to die a lot and not the same way that you think but first what you want to do is exhaust theolia's dialogue as he's just sitting there kind of talking to himself he's going to tell you that you should not be drinking the nectar because only he is allowed to do so this nectar from saint trina is very poisonous it is going to kill you now the next thing we actually have to do is drink the nectar and not just 
one time we have to drink the nectar. You have to drink it until she starts talking to you, and you are going to die at least four times before that occurs. Now, don't worry, your runes are going to be right next to where you died here. They're not going to be completely lost or put to a very different location before you interacted with this cave, St. Trina and Theolier himself. It'll also be very clear when she starts to talk to you because instead of responding very quickly, you'll actually have a black screen and a very soft voice will start talking to you. I don't want to spoil that for you because it leads into the overall story, so I'll let you enjoy it yourself. Now, once she has talked to you and you've done it several times to exhaust her dialogue, you can actually try and pass on the words to Theolier of what St. Trina told you. If you don't get this dialogue option to give him the words of what St. Trina told you, you're probably going to have to go and use the nectar a little bit more until you have the option available. And when you do try to actually give him the words that she told you, he's not going to believe you and basically just get mad at you for even trying to tell him. Make sure you exhaust all the dialogue in this by continuing this conversation until he does not allow you to continue the conversation. Once this occurs, go back to the side of Grace and rest, because he will then invade your world and try to kill you for simply trying to tell him the words that St. Trina told you. He's very, very mad and again, will try to attack you. He's not a very difficult fight, but you do have to knock him down. Don't worry, he's not dead for good. This is just one of the essential parts of the quest line. Once he is defeated, return to the side of Grace and rest and then go back into the cave of St. Trina. You will see him on the ground very clearly injured from your fight. At this point, he finally comes around to the idea of actually listening to you and actually he hearing out what St. Trina told you, which you've been trying to do all along. Once again, exhaust the dialogue with him, and at that point, he starts to repeat himself with his answers is when you know you need to progress the game until the very end area. In the end area, you'll be able to summon him for two different fights. The first of these two fights is going to be right near the cleansing chamber ante room, as you may be familiar with this part of the actual storyline, is when you go and face against Letta and her companions. She will do her normal introduction, basically accusing you of everything that's occurred heard is your fault and kind of figuring out who you actually are. Once she disappears and you're allowed to invade her world for this group fight, you will also see some summon signs depending on what else you've done throughout the game for NPCs. Now one of these options is going to be the Olier, which I highly recommend that you do summon into this fight because there's a lot going on in this fight and depending on what new game level you're on, it is kind of difficult. Now you don't have to summon him for this, it's just an option that you get because you did progress his quest line. And the other option you have to summon him for a fight is right before the final boss fight, which I will definitely not be showing so you guys can enjoy that masterpiece of a fight. Once again, he is not required to be summoned to finish up his quest line and get the final rewards. It's just an option that you now get because you progressed his quest line up to this point. Now, summoning him will make the final fight a little more difficult, so it's totally up to you if you want to summon him or not. All you have to do now is complete the final fight of the DLC, rest up in the new grace that spawns, and unfortunately you will see Theolier dead on the ground, which you are now able to loot to get his hidden needle and his entire outfit. But this isn't the only thing you get from this quest line. You want to make your way back to where you interacted with St. Trina, and unfortunately she's going to be dead as well. But in front of her, you're going to see a legendary item that you can now pick up. This is actually going to be St. Trina's Blossom, which I'll go into a little more detail here shortly. Now with the quest line completed, let's take a quick look at all the different things that you just got. Starting off with the LAA's needle, as you can see, it is a fist weapon with some very interesting attributes and gives you a Ash of War that uses Sleep Evermore as the unique Ash of War for this. As you may guess, this is very close to his whole theme of using poison and being very close to St. Trina and her sleeping poison. It's a very unique weapon, a very unique Ash of War. I definitely think it's fun to use every now and then. I wouldn't main it as your main weapon though. But you guys can let me know down in the comments how useful this is in PvP. I do not do a lot of that. Now, of course, we also have have his entire outfit, the Olier's mask, which is really kind of like a medium weight outfit. It's not that strong, but what might actually be interesting to you is the effects of this actual outfit on your character. If you go and inspect this outfit a little bit more, you'll see that this increases your arcane stat a little bit every time you have one of these pieces of armor equipped. Now this is only an effect for the head and chest piece, not the arms and legs, so it might be something to use if you're very heavy on the arcane stat. This is what his outfit will look like when you have a full equipped and when you're dual wielding his fist weapon it of course just looks exactly like him splashed onto your character it is a cool looking set i like the aesthetics of this set of armor but again it may not be your cup of tea but you may want to use the arcane abilities the arcane stats that come with the set of armor now here's a quick little glimpse of the actual fist weapon and its unique ash of war it's a very simple strike that does build up the eternal sleep as you use it with fists and the ash of war itself and we can't forget about saint trina's blossom either 
it's a very simple headpiece that you could throw on it literally is just a blossom now the actual stats of this thing may be a little bit of the weak side especially because when you look at it, it actually takes away some of your ability to deflect pierce damage however if you're very heavy on fp such as a mage and you stay your distance a lot more it might be very much so worth it because it boosts your fp even a little bit and again it's aesthetically pleasing for some of your outfits but that is how you complete the only a's full quest line inside of shadow of the earth tree like i said in the beginning of this video i enjoy this quest line a lot it's very in depth and has a lot of emotion behind it especially when you follow this character closely if you follow this quest line story very closely you'll very quickly see what i mean now i hope you guys did find this helpful if you did make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons down below so i know that you did find it helpful and let me know down in the comments your favorite part of this quest line when you go through it i'm always curious about that stuff once again i hope you guys did find this helpful and i'll catch you guys in the next video